Oh. Are you ready? Oh, I'm one. Okay, good. All right. Uh, here from public, nobody from the public. Uh, first selectman's briefing. My briefing tonight is going to be brief since I've been gone for a number of days. Um, uh, we, uh, with regret, we received a resignation letter from uh, Melissa McDonough, and um, she is going to be taking another position in Putnam, is it, Chris? No, Killingly. And uh, it is, uh, she's been with us for 17, she's done, been with us for 17 years and she's done a marvelous job. And she's actually helping us with that, which was not very nice. Yeah, her last day is June 30th. Okay, uh, other than that, I don't think I have much more to report. Okay. Uh, other than I meant to mention before, we have an issue with not weed. You know what that is? Not weed is highly invasive. We heard about this, I heard about this from Jennifer Foker, uh, uh, May 10th. It's Japanese knotweed, is highly invasive, almost impossible to eradicate once it becomes well-established. And according to Connecticut general statutes, knotweed is prohibited from imp importation, movement, sale, purchase, transplanting, cultivation, and distribution. So the knotweed was discovered in our uh, Knowlton Hall lawn where we reseeded after putting in the patio. So it came in the dirt that was used there. Uh, it's unclear where that dirt came from as to whether it came from a pile that we had in town, you know, through public works, or if it came from whoever we get. Uh, in addition uh, to this, letter and, and, and speaks to how to eradicate it. It's not easy to eradicate. And if you even try to cut it with a lawnmower or whatever, it spreads all over the place. So you have to dig it up and it has long roots. And in fact, Jennifer Sterling Foker went there and she dug up all those pieces. She's the head of the pollinators group. And I think she's also in the Ashford Garden Club. So they're all aware of it. And the roots, even though it had just been gone down, ago the soil were like this she took them out and she put them in a bucket uh, i also she also indicated that there is some growing in another place in town um and i'm trying to remember where a stand of it she was going to take a good look at it and then i got a notification through the selectman's <laughs> email bless you that there's some on the road i live on that's down at where um Seacar road turns into east howie so uh, I went to look at that. And I, I have a hard time identifying it because I'm not accustomed to it. I did talk with Public Works with Casey. He's very aware of what knotweed is and these other invasives. And in fact, the guys have been trained in it previously. But what he was going to do is do another training thing with them. I think the problem is, is that, you know, where do we get our soil from? And in fact, down at Public Works, they have a great big patch of it that they kind of don't know what to do with. And he said, um, he doesn't know whether to mow it down or whatever, but it's a pretty big patch. Anyway, um, the problem, sorry? Can you burn it? No, it's not gonna kill it. You've gotta get the roots out and you can't leave any pieces of the plant anywhere. And like, like it's, it's highly invasive and it's illegal to move it around in your town or anything like that. So. We're trying to figure out the best way to address it based upon where we hear it is, but even at public works, they have it. Mm. Um, I was actually surprised to know that Casey is very aware of what the invasives are, has had training in it, and that the guys, that at least some of the ones, have been trained in it before. So Jennifer Sterling Foker offered to do a class. I don't know if that's necessary. It kind of didn't fit with the crew. I, I don't think, but Casey is perfectly capable of, you know, talking to them about it. 
I think I think the problem is they're kind of going, well, it's all over the place. You know, what do you do in a situation like that? The only thing I can think of is where you actually know it is, do what you can to get it up. Um, and if you don't get it, uh, you're not able to get it up, what you do is you actually hit it with some killer. Uh, glyso injected with glyphosate in late summer when the plant is drawing energy down to its roots. So it's one of those things that's kind of a pain. And I know that previously, years ago, we were trying to spray for things like poison ivy and all of that. And uh, some people in town didn't like that and so we stopped. That was years ago. So now you see poison ivy's rampant. Connecticut's such a hothouse for it. No, especially this year. It's, oh, yeah. It's like every year. There are tendrils like this on trees. So anyway, uh, she said she'd be happy to provide additional information about knotweed along with the photos and videos. Uh, she did take photos and documented for me. So oh, I'll let you know about that. And like I said, that other place that's on the road where I lived, it was a complaint from one of the neighbors. I mean, there's someone I actually know. They, they know my husband more than they and with that, uh, some of the same wording was used as was in Jennifer's write-up. So I think that person might be in the pollinators group or whatever. And for that reason is more aware of what it looks like than most people. Um, other than that, I don't think I have much else to add those two things. Okay, the next thing, acceptance of the minutes of the regular meetings of May 6th. May 20th and the special meetings of May 22nd and May 29th. Chris, I think you've already given it's Would someone like to speak to them. You were here for the sixth. I was here for the sixth. So uh yeah. We need a minutes for the sixth. Second. Okay. Any any corrections? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will move the 30th the 20th. I was not here, so I'll have to. The 20th was the, 20th was the one where we quorum. didn't have a quorum. Okay. So with that one, um, do we do a motion? I don't think so. Okay. Special meetings. Of I will move the 22nd. And do we have a second? Yeah. Okay. Any corrections? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'll move the meeting of the 29th. That's Thank you. I will second that. Any corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris, thank you for doing such a good job on the minutes. Welcome. Cured from boards, commissions, committees. I don't have anything from any boards, commissions, or committees. Uh, old business. Ashford School Roof Replacement Project Status. Uh, we have hired the um, contract, the general contractor. Mm -hmm. They've been notified properly last Wednesday. Um, we're waiting for them to come by to sign the contract, you know, um, and we'll get that done. It's they're my FedExing. Oh, they are? Uh, UPSing their insurance certificate. Good. And the bond. Very good. I wish you had that tomorrow. Very good. Uh, originally, I did hear last week from the owner's rep that he was going to schedule a meeting with the general contractor and with our architect for this Wednesday. I don't know if that's the case, but, you know, that's their thing to do. Any other questions about um, that project status? Because our next item is the bonding timetable. So the bonding timetable, um, we have it here. Do you have a copy? It's from... Munistat, Mark Chapman. It looks like this. Yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, organizational meeting was held on the 28th. Um, the POS, what does POS stand for in this one? I forget. Not point of service. 
a piece of no, not that either. <laughs> oh, it was informational updates that they needed from the town. Oh, that was the details that well, the bond council asked for. Correct, Chris? Mm -hmm. And we're working on that. Uh, and the MA stands for, what does MA stand for? It doesn't stand, it's not the town. Oh, let's see, town BC, oh, here it is, municipal advisor. Okay. okay, so the intent is for him to distribute the first draft to the working group on Wednesday, receive comments on the first draft, I'm sorry, Wednesday the 12th, and then receive comments on June 19th, distribute the final draft to the working group on June 21st, and then June 26th, receive final comments and appendices and then on Friday, the 28th, distribute it and file for CUSIP. And I forgot what that stands for. So we have that here. CUSIP. Um, and then the note sale, and then closing on the notes. And the thinking is that rather than doing bonding, we're really doing notes. Is that correct, Chris? Yes. And that's because it's more timely and more flexible. Gives us extra time. And you'll see the information for um, everybody on the second page. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, discuss and or act on Ashford School roof, roof solar options, power purchase agreement versus municipal ownership. And with that, we had originally intended to have a meeting um, potentially this week or next week and pull together um, the school roof building committee, um, right, to talk about the solar options, if I understand correctly, if we were to purchase the solar ourselves, it would be eight, about $880,000. And then of course you have to have um, whatever your maintenance is gonna be for it. So that's one of the reasons that we're looking at the notes, bonding notes, so to speak, is because that would give us more flexibility if we were going to use money for that. I'm probably not making you a lot of sense. I don't know. Use money from the five million on the bond that was approved. Well, what we should bond for is what we actually need. I mean, sorry, the notes we should we should get what we actually need when we go to do the notes for the roof. And I don't believe that's going to be five million dollars. Well, the five million dollars, as I understand it the motion and action by town meeting did not include solar panels. That is correct. So I would think we would need separate, probably legal advice on how to approach that, whether we need another town meeting to make an appropriation, but I would we're, think, we're, we're, I would think not, we, we're not authorized to use any of that 5 million for that I, at this point. We know that we understand that. So it was, um, Chris, when we were talking with him, we did mention a little bit about solar and we were trying to make sure that we understood how we would have to address that. And yet, separately, it's just a matter of, okay, so we're looking for money. We need it for the school roof. How much do we really need for the school roof? You don't want to get more than you need, uh, not too much more than you need. Um, and so we need to make sure that we've got that laid out. One of the things we have provided to the bond council is what the costs are that have been estimated for the roof, the breakdown of the costs, or we're sending that tomorrow, tomorrow or Wednesday for them to work with. And I couldn't, wasn't sure where that ended up, Chris, because I left Wednesday afternoon. But we had already gotten some information. We have it from the architect. We've got it from the, um, the uh, bids that we received for the work. And then we also looked at, what was it, a 5 or 10% 
um, contingency. Ten percent you mentioned. Last meeting, I have a thought on the solar panel. Sure, I'd like to see a public hearing on that led by the Board of Selectmen with, and ask the building committee to be there. because Well, we have to have that to get the money. We have to do that anyway, but before any formal action is taken, I think that would be a good idea. Right. I'm getting, I don't know about you folks, but I'm getting quite a bit of feedback, pro and con about solars. Well, I know that there's certain people in town who are not too thrilled with solar and its benefits and, and the payback because we're not experiencing the kind of payback we would have liked. If I understood correctly or understand correctly, when they put the solar on the fire station roof, they didn't put on as much solar as they originally planned. So they're only saving $48 a month on what was put on there in terms of their electricity. And that's what I think we heard from Paul Barner. So, uh, and here they're, by the way, they're going to be inspecting, tomorrow it is, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to inspect senior housings uh, solar, and then they're coming over to inspect the performance of this solar. Turn it back on if required. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, the, the common, certainly among those of us who've had to think about this, the common feeling is somebody's getting money back from this, but it doesn't seem to be the people who are investing in it, you know, the town. So we just need to understand what we're really and, going to get. And, and I, you know, there's a lot of things going out there. And I've always had the impression we've never realized the way it was originally sold to us, what we were going to be. We've never realized the advantage to it. Maybe that's changed now. And maybe a public hearing, if we can ask some experts that can explain it, they can explain it to us, show us, use us. Elderly housing is the biggest array that we have. Good. Um, yeah. I haven't talked to Jennifer about this in quite some time. I'll be, seeing her, I'll be seeing her tomorrow. But the last time I talked, she said, yes, we, we are realizing, we have realized some savings. But my recollection was about seven, a half of what we anticipated the saving was going to be over. It's Which about better what? than nothing. You said it was about what? Half. Half of what we were told. Half. And what was the firehouse was a transformer issue, right? Well, to be able to put uh, what they the can. power back into the city, yeah, they right. had to, you know, spend twenty thousand dollars on transformers or something. Oh, it looks like we've had some guests join: Hunter Krukoff and Travis. Somebody, Travis, can you give us your last name? Travis, are you one of the students that came to our previous meeting? Travis, are you muted? Yes, they're both muted. <laughs> uh, Hunter Krukoff, are you uh, the, one of the Krukoffs that just, oh, that was the other thing. Our, um, our basketball court down at the Ashford Memorial Park mm -hmm. has been repaved. Nice. They're going to be putting the um, the crew cops did it mm -hmm. pretty quickly, which was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to be the line work is going to get done on Friday or Saturday. Very good. In addition, the outbuildings down at the Memorial Park have been painted. That was done for thirty nine hundred dollars. They did a really nice job. Good. So uh, nice improvements down there. So, Mr. Krukoff, is that you? Uh, yeah. Hi. Are are you from that group, or you just have a common name? Um, uh, I think they're my cousins and uncles that do it. Oh, okay. Uh, we you missed persons to be heard. Was there something that uh, you wanted to say during this meeting? Uh, no. I'm just I'm just here doing a civics uh, project. I got to town attend a town meeting, so oh. just taking notes and everything. Okay, so here you are. Um, you can also find notes and minutes, uh, agendas, et cetera, out on our town website. Okay. All of our meetings and the recordings. So you can see that. Travis, are you doing the same thing? You're on uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he is. He. I don't know why, but his uh, microphone isn't working. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. If you have any questions, let us know. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so... 
uh, yeah, having a town meeting. Now the question on the solar is, do we have the town meeting, an informational meeting? If we were going to be pursuing getting the solar either way, whether it's leasing it or um, purchasing it outright, we would have to go to the Board of Finance or the, and then they would be asking for a town meeting as well, right? So it, they would be approving us calling a town meeting. So but we can do that my, on our own. My thought was, well, we can call a town meeting on our own. Yeah, then we can as board. We can do that, right? Well, if it's something outside of that five million, which this is, yes, absolutely, we need their permission to call right. a town meeting to expend town funds. So I think but first my, of all, my thought was the school call a a public hearing, get input. Yeah. Ask whatever experts we may have yeah. to join us to answer some questions, and then then let us deliberate. I know we've been talking about purchase. We've been talking about yeah, you know, leasing. Um, we've been talking about a variety of things, and I'm all over the board on how I feel about that. Well, the other thing too is we need to have somebody up there who is able to basically put it in Reader's Digest level terms for everybody because it's. Well, when we've had an expert talking to us about it, it's been really, it's too detailed. Well, the, the, the gentleman that comes to mind is Mark Robbins as far as expertise, but we would have to make sure that it doesn't become the Mark Robbins show. Exactly. Okay. But he's he's more informed with rates coming back to us than, that, than anybody else I've heard unless we... <clears throat> oh, and he's documented, else. he's documented them for us. Yeah. So we can do that. But I think there, there's some concerns. I think there's some probably misinformation on both sides. I think so. Um, but I think we need to clear the air on it and then the board come back and deliver. And then, and then make an inform and make an informed decision. Yeah. I don't know, Roger. How do you no, I'm I'm no, I'm hearing mixed feedback. Me too. Uh okay. So uh, we'll plan on that public hearing. We should probably have that, what, in July? Yeah. We're, uh, it'll give us the opportunity to put summer, it. But... It'll have, give us the opportunity to put it in the citizen. Um, uh, which takes, actually, there is something um, that I can add to our, to my update. Um, Chris, any problem with me just going back to the update for a second? What I wanted to do was say that we had a meeting with Casella today, and it was uh, Chuck Atkins, Casey, Chris, and me. And so we asked, I mean, about what the rates would be, what we would get back in terms of uh, cost management, in terms of uh, cardboard, what we would have to do, because we can get a rebate, if you will, on that or a discount. Um, and what we would have to do around that. So we've gotten better information from them, kind of, you know, put them on the hook to make sure that we got the information. Our recommendation, our likelihood is going to be to go with what they have. We can provide you with all the information um, and we'll do that for our next meeting. But we did meet with them today. It was a good meeting. Um, and it seems like it's, uh, it would be a less than 4% increase overall. Chris went and she did some magic with the numbers based upon what we've had for tonnage and all of that. Um, Could I get a copy of that? Yes, you will. Your we summary? just didn't get a chance to okay. put a copy together for tonight's meeting. Well, so 4% is a lot better than I've heard from a few other towns. Well, and the other thing too, how it was described before, you know, Chris was with me. I, I gave Mark, whatever his name is, um, their agent a hard time. <laughs> to the point of, you know, you will be in my office. On one day, ten. I said nine, and they all heard ten. The game at ten, um, and it was satisfying to Chuck Atkins, who had been saying, "You know, he was really working on the really the um, cardboard issue." So one of the things that I thought I would do for the July citizen, this would go into effect July first. So the whole thing with the cardboard 
um, just all of that and what is cardboard, what's not, those kinds of things. Um, they're gonna send us their pamphlet. And I'm thinking that we will either take the information from it and put it out to the public and the citizen as to what constitutes cardboard, yada, 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 how you're gonna do it. Uh, or we'll take their entire pamphlet and put it in because it talks about all of that. For example, cereal boxes are cardboard, but you gotta take the wrapper out of it. The things that you get, the cartons that you get orange juice and milk in, they are not cardboard because everything, as they explain, everything that hold, that looks like cardboard that holds water, liquid, is actually covered with plastic. No, those, that was not recyclables. I think that was the point you made. Those have to go, they don't go into the recyclable hopper. They, and they can't go into the cardboard. Or the cardboard hopper. The they cardboard because. Yeah. Single stream. Right. right. But no, they're not single stream. They go into regular household trash, into the comp big compact. They're bulky. Dog food bags, which are paper on the outside, yeah. have a plastic liner. Yeah. Go into household trash. So like everybody that. who thinks that one of those cartons that holds those things is, is cardboard or something like it and is either recyclable or breaks down, it doesn't. So we need to educate the public on what it is yep. and the benefits of them actually you know, segregating the stuff out and putting it in where it's supposed to be. So you're thinking about putting their instructional sheet in the citizen? Is that what you said? Something that says this is what this is what yeah. constitutes recyclable and this is what is not. Because How about if we do an education thing at the transfer station and get this guy to come and invite the public. We could we could try to do that. I want to put it in writing for them so they yeah. can refer to it. Um, and we should probably update our own flyers. Well, that's what, as you were saying that, that's what was going through my mind. Maybe yeah. we take the opportunity time to update our flyers. Yeah. Instead of doing a print into the citizen, doing do a stuff. And, a and stuff? Put the new flyer into the citizen, and then everybody can hold on to that. Well, actually, the only reason I'm hesitant about that is because the way that we do the citizen is it goes off to the printer and the printer sends it to the uh, yeah, post just, office. Just food for thought. I yeah. Um, either way, what we want to do is get the information out. So it's going to go out on the website yeah. and should be something in the citizen where they see it. Ideally, I would have put it right on the front cover because it's it would be a new thing in terms yeah. of how we're doing it. Yeah. So they even talked about, you know, what, what kind of bin to put the stuff in, what's going to make, where it should go. What makes the most sense to make sure people understand that that's that and not mix other things in with it and how the guys at the transfer station are going to be able to monitor what's going in. So just even physical where it's Did going to be. Did someone talk about their new machine, the machines they have down there? Where did you say all I, I asked about, yes. Yeah, they have, uh, yeah, they were still working on it. We thought it was going to go in in May. Sounds like it's going to go in in July or August. Now, this is where that this machine sort will do all its own sorting? This is sorting. No. no. When they, the load goes in, they dump the load. Oh, this is different. They're going to do an audit. Different. So what we've asked for is an audit to see how much of our, how much of what we have in our regular trash is recyclable, if I get it straight or it's the other way around I how much of what we're saying the recy recyclable is actually recyclable right and so they're going to do an audit and our pricing in a sense is going to be based on that what they think that we would get back in terms of uh, i mean that once they get that new machine down there i'd love to be invited and go down to that's funny because both the, well both of the other guys are going to go down for the audit too okay good okay sorry to digress the uh, okay, going uh, discuss and act on ACE, ACE equipment logging request accessing Cattle Rock property. Still working on the letter, I just haven't finalized it and the uh, update in the contract. Uh, but I did commit to getting that done by the end of the week. Uh, finalized town building use fee schedule and Ashford Food Bank donation policy. We basically have it in terms of you know the people who have our using the, uh, what I didn't check, and I'm sorry, I wasn't here, uh, is the people who are using the outside area next to the old post office, 
Uh, I didn't check yet or confirm that they're paying for the use of that. I know we wanted to do that. And I think the other thing that then you got a full agenda, you do it when you have a chance, but we were talking about a form that they're going to sign when oh, they're using. Absolutely. For all of our buildings. Insurance requirements. Yeah. All of our buildings. Alcohol, that sort of stuff. Yeah. The, uh, all right. Uh, Ashford Volunteer Fire Department Station 20 roof update. Uh, we have the, um, we have our meeting scheduled for June 11th. Uh, I missed something in the uh, write-up that's on the cover of the citizen. We didn't put the location. So we're gonna fix that. Do it, uh, someone gave me, called, contacted me tonight to let me know. We'll put it out on the town website. I don't know what else we can do beyond that other than make sure we post something downstairs that has that corrected. But we use the citizen for the notic notification process. Okay. Uh, new business, board commission appointments. Don't have anybody for Economic Development Commission, Inland Wetlands and Water Courses, Agriculture Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we sure could use some people stepping up for those. So, um, would we want to put a reminder in the citizen for July that says, hey, we still have these openings in these. I think that's a great idea. Okay. We've had some response in the past. Yep. Well, we've done that. It's called an invitation. Okay, so that'll go in the citizen. Uh, tax refunds, do we have any? No. Okay. Authorize the uh, next item, authorize the first selectman to ratify two year contract between the town and Ashford School for provision of funding from an Ashford School grant to support the after school program for the years 24 through 20, uh, 2024 through 2026. So moved. Thank you. Seconded. Thank you. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Reappointment of James Campoformio to serve as Ashford's fire, Ashford's tree warden from June 1, I'm sorry, July 1, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? With many thanks. Yes, with many thanks. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Uh, item E, accept with regret the resignation of Melissa McDonough from her position as Director of Youth and Social Services. Absolutely, and uh, possibly we could draft her a letter, just a letter of appreciation for her service. Thank you. And Chris did give me a copy of a draft, I guess that you and I, you and her are working on about job description. Uh, for the for Melissa, yeah, yeah, I, right there. I'll go over. I'm sure Roger will. We may have a couple of. Okay, thank I you. I don't know when we're going to try to. We're going to get that what, in. What Catherine and I talked. We just want to put it in right away. Post in the next couple of days. We're trying to get Give somebody her. before she leaves. Right. Good luck. So if we get posted on the CCM website and the Youth Service Bureau whatever they are, organization. And Melissa was the one who has given us these places to post, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's working with us. I, I was contacting. CCM also had something they did or posting for us. We're going to do it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. All right. I know we have to have the disclaimer about being an equal opportunities employer and all right. that. So. Right. We'll definitely make sure that that's in there. Um, agenda items for, unless you've got something else you want to add to the agenda. Anything you've been thinking about or have a concern about? No. Okay. Agenda items for upcoming Board of Selectmen meetings as they come. Um, at some point, we know that Lynn's going to be done with the Agriculture Commission stuff. He might be pretty done now. So we're going to put, how about this? Agriculture Commission request. Request for um, 
um, ordinance change, any ordinance changes. What else do we have? Um, I think what I'd like to do also, if I'm able to for our next meeting, is review what we know about our financial status for this fiscal year. You know, it'll be mid June. Mm -hmm. Just a heads up. I know that our um, senior center is going to go over by about twelve thousand dollars. The um, um, bear with me. Parks and Rec. Right now they have, I don't think they have many, any money to work with right now. So, um, and they're trying to hold to that. I'm not sure how well that's going to go. I will tell you, uh, and I can also go over the plan for how we'll change how the senior center can operate using a, like a senior center fund to work from where monies are taken out of it for programs, that kind of thing. And then monies from programs would go into it. And if there's extra, if they make more than whatever, then it stays in this fund. It can accumulate and then she can do other programs with it. Uh, I have talked with Sherry about the same kind of a thing for the parks and rec. And they, in a sense, they already have that. So bottom line with parks and rec, they need to bring in more money to offset their expenses and the way that they've been doing their estimating is not good. And uh, so should we reviewed that today? So uh, I want to make sure I understood what Sherry was talking about. So I think I'd like to go over that with all of you for the next one as well. Uh, anything else you can think of? I've got 7.39. Who, baby. Uh, any motions to adjourn? No, we want to stay here. Sure you do. So moved. Second. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Good luck. We're adjourned. Uh, feel free to call here if you have any questions about anything with our local government. It's 860-487-4400. That's the Selectman's office. So thank you for joining us. Good night.